Good evening, everyone. That's a small group, so we're going to make this really personable and want to make sure everyone questions and concerns get addressed. Uh, my name is Calvin Connors. I'm the Associate Dean of Admissions and Recruitment. I want to welcome you all to tonight's construction management information session. Um, we have our program chair, Leslie Tuplin, who's going to be talking to you a little bit more about the program, what to expect within the program, and the outcomes. You know, you're going to spend the next two years here at Benjamin Franklin learning um, about construction management, but then, you know, what is that going to lead you to? You know, so these are some of the questions that will be addressed today, tonight. And then, um, you know, any other questions, we can definitely assist you with whether or not it's something with the missions, your immunization forms, or financial aid. Uh, we'll be here to answer those questions. So without further ado, I want to pass the mic to Leslie Tuplin. I'm trying to get my light straight <laughs> without <laughs> blinding me and everyone else. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Leslie Tuplin. I am, uh, first I want to say thanks so much for um, coming to this information session. And I can t just tell you that the hubbub in the classroom uh, with the students that we have right now is this is a really exciting time to be thinking about construction management, okay? And um, <clears throat> so I want to first kind of just maybe talk a little bit about um, how construction management came about. And prior to you guys logging on, we had this a little bit of this conversation. So I don't think that there's any place in the greater metropolitan area where you can either drive down the street, jump on the subway, walk down the street and not see a multi-million dollar project going up, right? So whether it's housing, whether it's infrastructure, whether it's, you know, dormitories at a local college, uh, renovations of brownstones, you know, conversions of triple deckers, whatever it is, that all falls in <clears throat> underneath the purview of construction management. So um, interestingly enough, construction management in, in like the umbrella of it by itself is relatively new major. I'll call it a new major. It is not a new industry. It's just that some things have changed on the way that contracts are put together, how design works. Um, it's not the same as it as you know architecture engineering construction was a few years ago and that has a lot to do with the fact that it's become much more exciting it's become much more fast tracked there um like i said there are, are million dollar projects that many of our interns are going out on this summer and so there was a real need to consolidate the management of many of these very large construction contracts right so just want to let you know and and kelvin and i just talked about it underneath the umbrella of construction management and people that oversee large construction projects you have architects you have engineers you have contractors subcontractors designers interior designers all of the all of those folks are now on the same team whereas before, like say 15 years ago, um, it was a little bit more splintered, okay? It still worked well, but now most of the clients, uh, just based on a couple of things happened in Boston, right? So we had the Central Artery Project, we had the Deer Island Project, we had some of the Southwest Carter Project, the Green Line. Essentially, all the clients realized that we perform a whole lot better when we're on the same team. That doesn't mean we're all sitting in the same office like we did 20 years ago when I started. It just means that we're all working together and collaborating all the time. So um, if you've had a chance to take a look at our curriculum, you will notice that there are, um, you know, right from the very beginning, uh, the first class CM100, you, you will learn about construction drawings and the different people involved in contracts and how to read drawings and those are the those are our documents where we that we execute the work in the field uh, we also you know we 
we talk about architecture, we talk about engineering and, and all that kind of stuff. But essentially, you will, um, as the catalog outlines, I'll try to paraphrase it, you basically come in for what I consider to be a very accelerated two-year program so that when you leave, you are work ready, okay? So anybody that likes anything to do with buildings or construction or architecture or engineering, um, basically that, that big umbrella covers our curriculum. So you learn about documents, you learn about subcontractors, you know, who does what, how to price jobs, how to schedule jobs, um, some on heavy construction. So we, we are fortunate enough, we still, and we are keeping it, um, have courses on heavy construction and surveying so that you you will receive um, an education that is very well rounded so if you you know depending upon what your specific interests are maybe you want to be in the office maybe you want to be in the field maybe you want to be you know half in the office and half in the field or you know anything along those lines but tons and tons of exciting opportunities um, just to give you a little bit of an idea, um, because this is all good information, and I don't know if any of you had the opportunity to come to the career fair, we had an unbelievable turnout, okay? And I'm, I'm just speaking for the, the students that sent me emails just today. They're, they're getting back to me and telling me about all the great opportunities they have for the summer. So some are gonna work for surveyors and go out and lay out projects. Some of them are going to work for construction managers, others are working for like landscape architects. So big, um, as many of you might notice that, well, you will now after this conversation that we're having, that sometimes projects take, projects rarely take a year, large projects. So, so you can probably wherever you happen to live um, and wherever you happen to transport to, you probably have seen projects going on for a couple of years and people will say, oh, it's been going on forever. But, you know, what you'll learn in the classes is, you know, um, what happens at the beginning of the project, everything from excavation, which is, you know, clearing the site, excavating for the foundation or the underground parking garage, and then all the other steps through completion, right? So as I had mentioned, Kelvin, that's why, um, We'll talk a little bit more as we get as as projects get further along. Some work gets finished, and then other things uh, like you know ceilings go in, uh, carpeting goes down, hardwood floors go down, appliances go in. All that you know, everything that gets ready for the client to inhabit, right, to occupy that particular project. It's not always housing. Sometimes it could be, particularly around here, it could be um, institutions, it could be hospitals, it could be industrial, it could be pharmaceutical. There's really a whole um, large variety of different projects that we, that are available for work, but also that we're gonna study in class. I want to make one other, and then we can open it up for specific questions. I do want to make one other major point um, that for as long as I can remember, um, and that's probably 10 years plus now, I'm thinking in terms, um, the construction management end of the industry has always had a green component, right? So when we're talking about big bucks, millions of dollars we have always been charged with being responsible with the client's money and a lot of that has been, has which is now incorporated into you know people talk about sustainability and green construction <clears throat> we've always had a component of that but now every single one of our classes we talk about that okay so you know how do we how do we deal with new materials how do we make buildings more energy efficient how do we, you know, recycle our materials on site? All sorts of things like that. So there's a, a big, um, there's a big green, there always has been a big green component, but now um, everybody else is caught on. <laughs> so 
Um, I think that that's that's the introduction as far as I can tell. One one just additional piece of information. Um, I'm a, a BFIT grad, so it was then called Franklin Institute. I got my architectural degree um, at BFIT years ago, and I can tell you that the best decision I ever made in my life was walking into the front door of Benjamin Franklin because it set me, it set my traje trajectory for my career in a particular direction, which I've been able to over the years, you know, build more knowledge, work on different projects and things like that. But for sure, um, number, number one um, thing that really probably changed my life for the best was that I, when I, when I was 17 years old and I came to Ben Franklin for the first time. So I don't know if there are students here. I don't know if folks are what your age group is, but we have all sorts of different age groups and different type of students. And, um, and it, it really simulates the, the, what it's like to be out on the job site. So um, it's interesting. Uh, and we've had this, this year in particular, I think the students have just had an incredibly incredible blast coming to class and working in the labs and going out to. You could see um, behind me, <laughs> when I was a young engineer, I worked for an engineering company. We were in the Prudential Center, but we had the opportunity to be invited last, I think it was the end of October, beginning of November, where we took 20 students and we went up to the top of the hub. Turner Construction is in fact rebuilding um, four, like four and a half stories at the top of the Prudential building. So we got invited and we went out and had lunch and we spent the afternoon and it was, it was pretty, pretty amazing. So this is, this, this is an example of a job site and my screensaver behind us. Leslie, can you talk about the, um, the experiences students will have to be um, on site during the curriculum? And then um, after that, can you talk about some of the um, placement where some of your grads have been placed over the past couple of years and the salary? Yeah. You know? So, you know, like I said, this is a very um, exciting time to be, you know, getting involved in construction management. Um, I'll start with, so in our, we, we just added something to our curriculum and I do believe that it has been published. Um, so if you're wondering when you look through it, we've included a section that talks about um, the construction mentoring program and we've talked about internships and we've talked about site visits. Now because of the pandemic, um, we were kind of put on hold to physically be able to go out to job sites. So November, October, November was really the first time that we had been on a physical job site in maybe 18 months. Um, that had to do with the safety protocols that were um, whatever locality had. But what we did in the meantime, which I think was, was informative, obviously not the same as being out there, <laughs> you know, getting kick, dirt kicked on you, but um it it allowed students to be able to see the different types of projects so superintendents which are the people that literally run the job in the field had like a gopro on or their or assistant did so that we had walkthroughs on projects so we didn't have the opportunity till just a little while ago to get back out on projects but we did the best that we possibly could and it and it worked well um and it meant that also a lot of a lot of contractors and construction managers that maybe are very busy, right? So construction's always busy. You always have to have permission to get onto a job site. If you're a visitor, you need to be ex escorted. But now we're back, you know, obviously, um, you know, full time. By the time um, you folks enroll, will be full time. And, uh, and we have an industry advisory board that um, loves hosting our students. So you can look forward to actual site visits. Typically, it will be in replacement for a lab that you're already in. You'll get credit for going out on a job site for a day. There are other programs that we have where you can enroll and you can get in the construction mentoring program. 
go to a construction site for a day and then hopefully like um, as it moves along maybe one day a month uh, so we have both of that so everybody gets to see um, what's what's going on and and what it takes to uh, coordinate and work on a particular project at the time so um, yeah so so part of what we are doing with the curriculum is to make sure that everybody gets the appropriate amount of, of exposure right because it's like anything um, it's like watching something on TV if you're there it's a it's a lot different than if you're you know watching a zoom uh, somebody walking around so we've added that to the curriculum um, and again as long as as long as the weather is favorable and it's a safe time for us to be on the job, we'll all go. Like I said, there were, I would say, well over 20 people that came to the, to the project in November. Um, so we've had, really, um, it, we've had some remarkable success stories, okay? So I came just for a little bit of um, kind of, schedule i came back um to teach the surveying class okay that was um in like 2017. shortly after that i came on i came back to ben franklin um full time so in in that span i can tell you that we have one person who was an intern who has since been at gilbane now for five years um, we have a female who she um, she came from a foreign country. Her English wasn't, you know, what she wanted it to be. She got a construction management um, degree. She worked as an intern for Walsh Brothers. She's been over at Walsh Brothers for three years now. Um, at the career fair, we have another student, same year as Lilia. Evan, he did the construction mentor program. He's now working for Walsh Brothers over at MIT, right? Javante Odom, if you have an opportunity, go to our uh, welcome page and, and take a look at last year's graduates. So Javante Odom, um, he graduated last year. He went through the pandemic, right? So it doesn't really matter one way or another as long as we get our work done. He was able to get a part-time job with Turner Construction. He is now working full-time. He was one of the hosts when we were at the project on Um Let's see, we have somebody going out to Feldman. We have people that are gonna be at Consigli. We have two people that are going to Delbrook. One, more, one of our students will be working in Cambridge and I think the other one's gonna be working in Brookline. Um, but it's, it's really, um, it's really incredible that this year, even for interns, not even for full-time graduates, just even for interns, everybody has had two, if not more opportunities, right? So can you imagine having, you know, having two or three <laughs> people wanting to hire you and you, you have the opportunity to pick which one you like? Um, and, and so in the industry, I just, Again, you can tell my excitement about being in this in this major, but that's that's kind of unreal, right? And the students, because of the way that we run the labs and we have open workshops, they pretty much come in and tell me um, what's going on with it. So I got a couple of emails today. Uh, one student in particular just saying, I'm not handing in my exam yet, my final exam, but I do want to tell you I just got a job. I'm like, oh, that's great. So. Um, this year let's talk a little bit about money so this year um i think the lowest intern rate is 25 dollars an hour okay so one thing you can count on and i remember what oh, i remember a student saying tell saying to me last year oh professor tuple i can't take an internship because i have to work to make money and i said we are an industry where if you're on a job site and you're working in a designer's office, you get paid the same as their entry level people, right? So he was concerned because his girlfriend 
was in the medical industry and she had to do free internships, but that's not the case with us. So I know there are students that are starting, let's see, it's the 2nd of May, graduation is in like a week and a half. They, some of them I think have already started, you know, they're working around their finals and things like that, but I'm pretty sure some 50% of the students have already started with their internships for the summer. Um, and they usually run from like the middle of May to the second or third week in August. So that's, that's a good amount of time to be out on a real job site making real money. Did I cover it? Oh, and so then let me just talk about graduation, right? That's still for anybody that's, that's just coming in. Um, that's still two years away. Um, but the starting salaries, I would say, are from fifty to 75000 I think that a couple of the students that I had mentioned that graduated a couple of years ago, maybe three years ago, are in that 70000 plus range at this point. Um, you know, of course, continuing, you know, continuing their education, you know, continuing to do the right thing, keep, you know, get it, keeping up with all the certifications. So the one other thing, I know I'm talking a lot, I'm crowding everything in. So a couple of things that we, that we do at Benjamin Franklin is you're going to leave with your OSHA certification, right? You're going to have the opportunity to get your student license in um, green construction. Uh, you'll have the opportunity to become an associate in construction management. You'll do that with another professor and get ready for that exam. So we work pretty diligently with our industry advisory council. And, you know, whatever is happening out in the field, they let us know what's going on, and we add that to the curriculum, right? So um, that literally puts you one or two steps ahead of other people because you're again you're job ready you can get your osha 10 you're allowed to get on a construction project you know um, those things are really important because again it's going to set it's going to show that you're ambitious and it's also going to set you you know one step ahead of other people that are going for the same jobs but we've had just it's really it's it's almost overwhelming when I think about how well everybody's done. Um, I'm not surprised, but it, but when you get a lot of good news, it is, um, it uh, can be a little overwhelming, right? So as long as uh, everybody gets, you know, everybody right now, it's finals at this very second. Uh, so I know everybody is, diligently working to get their work in by, I think they have till midnight tomorrow night. So, um, but it's exciting, right? Because people are juggling all sorts of things and doing incredibly well just by coming to class, doing their work, going on site visits. They fell in love with the industry. There's a question in the inbox. Um, can you speak about the schedule? Um, differences between part-time and full-time. Lastly, are classes virtual for the fall? Okay, so that's a great question. Currently, right now, <clears throat> well, let, let me back up and then this will make more sense. So, um, this is a degree program. You will, you will finish in two years with your Associates of Science, okay? That means that not only are you going to be taking construction management courses, you're also going to be taking English and math and um, humanities, right? H-U-S-S, -S, humanities and social sciences. Um, and so um, those classes will be set depending upon how your schedule is. But what we, what we really work towards in the construction management department, actually in all the departments, we work with the registrar to, to make sure that when students come to campus, that they have like maybe two or three classes in one particular day, right? So that you're, you know, optimizing and you're a little bit more efficient. 
Now the construction management classes, we have been on campus the whole pandemic, right? Doing things safely, of course, but we've had labs. We never, construction management never left. Some of the courses, however, in fact, that were more suited to remote learning, like construction management one, which is a theory class, <clears throat> that that could be taught online. A couple of other classes can be taught online, but for the most part, and so what I want to say is I am not sure yet that they've decided which of the English and, and math classes are going to be on campus, but you can anticipate that probably 75% of your classes in construction management will be on campus because it's it's just um it's, it's one of those majors that lectures just don't quite do it right we have plans we have materials we have things that you really need to touch and feel so that's that's basically how it will go for the fall so i'm going to read your question and see if i answered it okay so um and to me, oh my gosh, I'm going to mess your name up. Okay, so Antonina, um, what what do you mean by um, part time and full time? The difference between part time and full time. I mean, as far as yeah. Good evening, everyone. I'm I'm asking specifically about. Um, so I work full time, and mm -hmm. so this would uh, this is also a second degree for me. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm trying to just think about um, how flexible um, it is to be able to uh, take the class, deciding on whether I will be a full time student or part time student and just the class um, options. I don't see I haven't registered for any classes yet. So that's why I'm asking. OK, so if you are coming in as a student that has previous experience or another degree, what either one, um, <clears throat> the first thing the registrar is going to do is see which courses you are available to transfer credits um and then it's in terms of part-time or full-time to be full-time there's a minimum of 12 credits required so that would be say four three three four credit classes or or four three credit classes or some combination of that right um and what we've been doing, and again, I don't have the exact schedule for the fall yet. We just finished the summer schedule. What we did this semester was we had for each class, we had one day lab or um, one day workshop, how, you know, whichever kind of class it is, and then one day lecture. And the lectures, in fact, we were because they were um, basically lectures with discussions we were able to um, do those online. So um, I think just to be a little bit more direct, I think that there's an opportunity there as soon as the schedule comes out for you to take a look at um, what's going to work for you. You know, and I would certainly be more than happy to talk to you directly about that once we know what's happening in the fall. Okay, thank you so much. And. And then just one other thing I want to mention is we do have a new department um, that co the construction management department worked quite hastily with the Department of uh, Continuing and Professional Studies. And there are five classes in that program that you can transfer into day credits. So if, if in fact that works better, they're the identical classes. So like uh, CM 280, which is like statics and strength materials, that class part time is the same class for full time, right? Different people, but it's the same course, right? Same curriculum, same deliverable. So, something to think about. Do you mind if I ask what your um, previous experience is? Sure. So I have a bachelor's in women's studies and African diaspora studies. Um, graduated college about 10 or so years ago. Still can't believe that. Um, <laughs> and um, I currently work in housing. So I'm on the customer service aspect of helping folks get into housing and affordable housing. Um, and so I'm looking to get on the other side of 
construction and development. Yeah. Okay, great. So then you know um, the registrar will take a look at all your liberal arts classes and all of that and see what, what is applicable for the transfer. Um, I want to mention the reason I asked you that is that we just had, um, she graduated just last year, um, Marie uh, Merkel. She was working in real estate, but I think she had a, her nursing degree and she was just looking for, you know, it was time for her to like shuffle things up. And she came and she got her construction management degree. She's also a licensed realtor um, and she's currently working for Bond Brothers. So she's also was featured on uh, one of the one of the LinkedIn profiles of one of our success stories, female um, success stories. So I think, um, like I said, I think we could we can always talk in more detail, but um, certainly this is a way to get experience to be on the opposite side, right? Right. Thank you so much. Yeah. How about Tucker or Desmond or Deshaun? Do you have any questions? Hey, uh, it's Deshaun. Sorry, I'm cooking here. Uh, I do <laughs> have two questions. Um, so I heard you guys talking about how, uh, you know, we have our standard math and English classes. What do those consist of, like, in the first year? Okay. Should I? I can field that question. Want me to do that, Calvin? Yeah, or I can pull up the curriculum. Okay, so so basically I'm thinking, I could give you just a quick overview, right? Because I see, <laughs> because I'm pretty, I usually talk to the students about this. So you'll have, you'll have um, like algebra and trigonometry, you'll have solid and plane geometry, which are like the basic courses that you need to calculate quantities of material like concrete or um, stone excavation, all that kind of stuff, paint, um, any of the finished products. So you'll have that, right? It's all going to be, it's all going to be applicable to construction management. And then you'll be, <clears throat> I believe that the social science class, like maybe you can take psychology. I know that there's also like, uh, any anthropology class, there's some photography classes. They're just, they're, you know, they're degree level type of, um, social science and humanities classes that um, fulfill the requirements to have a, thank you, <laughs> <clears throat> to have a science degree. So yeah, let me, let me just quickly run down. Now, thank you, Calvin, for putting that up. So um, in construction management, we have uh, building construction graphics. That's really, that's a lab. It's one hour lecture, four hours lab. That's really fun class. We work with plants. Actually, Tomorrow is our last day for that class this semester, and the students are coming in to make um, finished models, right? So they're going to build their own little miniature house tomorrow. Uh, construction management, one that talks basically about um, everything that you need to know, soup to nuts about how jobs get run. AutoCAD is your, your graphics design class, your computer-aided um, drawing and drafting. So that's pretty cool, too. That's one hour lecture, four hours lab. We have in, but we have a dedicated full time um, classroom, which we also doubles as the lab. So that's where all the AutoCAD stations are. So you'll be, um, I tell students, Union 304 belongs to construction management. <clears throat> it's open most of the time. So you can come in and work on your projects. So here we have English composition and technical math. So that's semester one, and then I'm <clears throat> excuse me, and then I'm looking down here in semester two. You you've got an English composition two, and then you've also got algebra and trigonometry. So it wasn't that far off. Um, semester two construction estimating one of the most valuable things that you'll ever course you'll ever take, whether you stay in construction or not. It's about how you cost out construction projects, which then um, allows you to determine whether it's a viable project. Heavy construction, highways, roadways, bridges, tunnels. Building materials and applications. This is this is a fascinating course because it covers it covers all the way from soil, from dirt, 
to the very end, the last swipe of the roller before people move into the building. So that's that's fun too. Like I said, we we've done green construction for as long as I've been back at Benjamin Franklin. So sustainable building technologies, that's our green class. Uh, project scheduling, that's how to put a timeline on jobs and make it happen. And then here you have plane and solid geometry, physics, physics lab, uh, SK200, that is going to, that's, that's a workshop where the academic success coaches will sit down with you and work on um, your resume, talk about the issues pertaining to um, student, good, you know, excellent student behavior so that you're more marketable as far as um, getting a job. And then the last semester, CM210, that's a project. Environmental systems, that's heating, ventilating, and air conditioning and refrigeration. Construction surveying, that's a, that's a full lab where you learn how to use the latest technology. So if you've ever seen um, yellow tripods on street corners and people look, they're looking through computer scopes, it's actually a computer sitting on a tripod. That's construction surveying. And then uh, statics and strength of materials is not only like a, a math physics class, it talks a lot about safety. Right? So um, yeah, there it is, another elective. I have a quick question. No. I, I saw some job postings, um, and some of them talk about OSHA 30. Yep. Is there, can you speak to that? Yeah, so um, OSHA 10, just so that you know, OSHA 10, you will, you, I'm not, we don't let you leave without that, or without you being like three quarters of the way through that. You can do that online. You can, right now I know Northeastern is offering us two days to go over and take, for the students to take that class. So OSHA 30, OSHA 30 is primary, it, it's primarily for the individuals that are running the project, the full-time supervisors in the field. So um, it has been our experience, we just started, we're actually, I guess they finished on Wednesday night. So on this past Wednesday, we finished our first go around of OSHA 30. I know that they had like 20 or 25 people in the class and everybody finished. They came in five weeks for six hours. So OSHA 30 pertains to 30 hours of training and you learn everything from how to be safe on ladders to excavation support systems to first aid, all of that. Um, so what we had two construction management students decide that they wanted to take that and, and on their own time obviously came in, you know, for the five nights. And they were there from four to 10. So yeah, it was five nights, six hours a night. Um, they came in and did that. But we do offer that. Um, we could talk, again, we could talk about how, how you could transfer one to another. But um, yeah, OSHA 30 is generally an add-on or if you do get an internship or you do get a full-time job, very often uh, very large construction management firms will run it themselves, right? So they'll know that they have, if they have 200 employees, they know that, you know, for the next month and a half, they'll send 20 people to that. But it's, it's typically um, back when I, um, you know, was out full time on projects. They it was usually if it was going to be a company wide thing, they would teach during the day, during the winter when it has downtime. But um, so OSHA thirty, it's it's a very expanded occupational safety health administration. Oh, for sure, we'll get you the ten before you leave. Okay, thank you. And then. Um, <clears throat> Another question, don't want to keep at, be the only one asking questions. No, it's okay. Um, <clears throat> but I also wanted to ask, um, you know, living in New England, we know that the cost of living is a lot more expensive and so salaries differ. Uh, can you speak to like what this position salary would be if it were like, is there a difference between living in the Midwest, living in the South? Um, would you say generally construction management, an associates in that is universal and 
um, entry level, mid level? Well, so that's that's another great question. <clears throat> so one thing that we know, and this is um, this is something you'll learn in the estimating class. The projects in the greater New England area cost more for a number of different reasons. Okay, one is people get paid more, right? So uh, we we in general on construction projects. We charge an extra 21% or 19% because that's what the industry uh, calls for, okay? We also know that if you're working in a more economical state or a Southern state where they don't have to have, they don't use the same kind of materials that we use, those folks actually probably make a little less, right? So they might make, you know, a dollar for a dollar or 85 cents, you know, of course, still market rate, but it's just a different market. Um, there are, so the starting, like I had, I'm glad you asked this question, because every time somebody sends in an email and they ask me like oh well we want some in we want some of your interns for the summer i immediately say how much are you paying because it's very competitive like for our students all these contractors and construction managers are competing against each other right so i think like i had mentioned i'm not sure if you were here at the beginning but the i think the lowest anybody's taking for the summer is 25 dollars right so that's just the part-time internship um and then it goes up from there um one thing about the construction management industry is that uh, what we found and i and even Givante or anybody else that's out been work out been working within three or six months they're getting you know a raise a promotion you know all sorts of great benefits maybe even transportation is paid for them so um it's very, very competitive. Um, now, I've been in this in this um, industry my whole entire career, and one of the reasons is because I, you know, it gave me the ability to do what I wanted to, but more importantly, to be able to, you know, pay my bills, um, my student loans, and everything like that. So. Um, that same opportunity is available for whoever you know, wants to enter into the Boston market. Um, I know, again, um, without giving out confidential information, I know that some of the students that graduated a couple of years ago, they're up in the, with, you know, with a prior degree or prior experience. Um, they wanted to round out their, you know, their body of knowledge with construction management, and they're, they're over $70,000. So again, it, it would really be that individual conversation that you would have or negotiate, you know, upon finishing the program. But um, very competitive. The and the one thing about this industry is that the mentor mentoring program and the internships are so strong. Like even twenty years ago. Um, whether, whether, you know, you were a co-op student, you were an intern, or you were part-time, or you were, were working for your neighbor's company, there's always, you know, opportunity for job shadowing and opportunities even for interns or, you know, first, you know, graduate hires that you get, you get buddied up with somebody, right? So you're never, and that, and that, I'll just speak from my perspective. Um, that worked well for me because I didn't come from a, a family, a construction family, right? So I, you know, whether I was assigned to somebody or somebody was assigned to me, whatever, however it happened, like you kind of work in a, a tandem, work in a team, everybody, you know, helps everybody else. And, and that's, that's something that's really gotten much better in the last 10 years. Right? takes that fear out of that worry out of being in a, you know. my first I'll tell you my first co-op job 
I actually was at the Prudential Center. So I was working for an engineering company. I didn't even, at the time, I didn't even know that engineering offices could be up in, in high rises. I didn't, you know, like, it was like crazy. Um, so I needed that, right? I needed to be part of a buddy system where I could learn from somebody, you know, who was overseeing the project, right? That's, that's why we set the program up like this, and that's why we have a lot of labs so that people can, you know, hands-on in the classroom, even if you're not out in the field yet. It just raises everybody's um, confidence. Great, thank you so much. Anybody else? Tucker? I'm just a junior in high school. I'm just looking to, uh, you know, see what my options are and just get some information on what's out there and uh, really like what I, trying to narrow down what I want to do after high school. Yep. So we have, um, currently right now, um, we have uh, some students that are in high school that come in here and there part time, um, just to grab a class in with the regular people. Um, we do have this year, it's interesting, we had um, 20, like 27 um, students admitted this year and not that i listen to people's conversation <laughs> but we're all in the same room and in a in a few of the students some of them were saying that oh i just had my 18th birthday so you know we've got a great diversity of um our classes are anywhere from say seven to 15 students so it's not like you're you're going to get lost in a in like a big lecture hall at a large university um but we've had you know a lot of a lot of students this year were saying oh gee you know i love you know being outside but i wanted to use my brain and and i didn't and they would say to me i didn't know construction management was a major so it's um they seem to be enjoying it but I overhear a lot of them saying, well, you know, how old are you? And one saying I'm 17, the other one saying I won't be seven, I won't be 18 until next year. So, you know, and then we have, you know, if anybody's an, an older student, we've had, we have people that are on their second and third career and it, it really does make a nice, a, a nice mix for, um, you know, the projects because everybody can bring whatever they experience they have or not. So any paid programs, I just want to talk a little bit about that. Um, certainly when you come in and you have an opportunity to talk to, talk to the um, success coaches, there, there could be um, opportunity, well, obviously all the internships are paid, right? So, um, and, uh, and I, just from a personal professional standpoint, <laughs> you're, Anybody that comes into this program, you're too valuable to, to not get paid for what you're going to do. Uh, but there are opportunities for some part-time things along the way. Um, so, Desmond, we could, you could explore that, that too um, along the way. Leslie, have you seen people juggle both um, working full-time and taking part-time classes? Do you know if any students are working in? Taking this yeah, degree. yeah. Um, so it would be nice. It's it's almost luxurious, right, to think about. Oh, I could be a full student full time. Um, but I, yeah, we've had. Um, I would say probably twenty five percent of the students are are um, maybe not even maybe juggling work and school and family. Um, so that's one of the reasons that I had mentioned earlier that what we really try to do is like stack the courses so that if you're, if you're going to be coming, if you like leave and work early on a, I'm making something up on a Tuesday and you're, maybe you're going to have a class at 2.30 and then you're going to have a class at 5 o'clock. Um, the registrar 
works incredibly hard to make sure that students' time is used wisely. So there shouldn't be any reason why you couldn't do both, um, particularly the way that the, the schedule is set up where you can, um, as you mentioned, maybe you will get credit for the English or maybe you get credit for a math class or something like that. So you might have more of a compact type schedule than um, maybe somebody who's, who's coming in as a freshman. Any other questions anyone has? I, I do want to mention one more thing. Um, in, the, in the case where there's a lab and then maybe there's a remote lecture, I typically what, um, and it, it happened today, what the students might do is, you know, say okay on one day i have to come in for a lab maybe they go in later that day and then others have made provisions so that um their their employer will allow them to have like the hour and a half to come to the lecture right just a zoom a zoom class so i think that there's you know a couple of different ways to um to to you know fit everything in It, it is, I mean, I think, I think in general, um, and again, I'm only speaking for myself, um, it, is, it is challenging sometimes when, when, you know, obviously everybody has bills to take care of and family, family issues going on. And I myself, um, when I went back to get my master's degree, I did that um, while I was, you know, working and teaching full time. So um, it can it can be a lot, but if you like what you're doing, it's a, it can be enjoyable. Let's run quick about schedule. Oh, okay. So. Um, yeah, let me talk a little bit about diversity in the field, right? So, so let's talk about <clears throat> the female um, or even minorities in the field in general. Um, this is an industry, this is a business for everyone. Um, there is absolutely uh, if you have an interest in this field, I look at it like the, your world is wide open, okay? And the reason that I say that construction management or construction in general or design or real estate or whatever, the, whatever umbrella it falls in underneath, right? It all falls under construction management, actually. But different, you know, there's different roads. Um, within the umbrella. So what's really interesting is, and I, I have seen, in the case of being at BFIT, I was the one and only. In the case of being at Northeastern University, I was the one and only. Um, so that's fine. Um, but what it means is that there's, why I say that is that um, there's plenty of opportunity. Whether you like the business aspect, whether you like the field aspect, whether you like the design aspect, um, the industry has come a long way. Now, I'm obviously have been doing this for a while, but the one thing that I find um, gratifying the most is when I talk to the students that graduated, right? Uh, what is the likelihood, let's just say, of a woman of color working in heavy construction, right? What's the likelihood of that? From the outside, people would say, um, well, who would want to do that? Who would want to get that dirty? But you know what? We've got somebody who's doing that right now. You know, she came out of the real estate 
end of things. She wanted to get into construction, and now she's finding out like there's a whole lot more to it than just seeing it on one piece of paper and trying to negotiate certain things. So I, I think the field is wide open, and not only just for, you know, whether it's uh, gender or ethnicity or whatever it happens to be, there's, still, there's a huge variety of opportunities um, for things to do, right? So if somebody is more business-minded, they might want to go into the contracts end. Or if you're more legally minded, you might want to, you know, jump over and do that too. If you're more math orientated, you might want to work in the estimating department. Scheduling, right? Anybody that got up today, that went to work, did stuff and showed up for this Zoom meeting, you're already a project manager, right? You already did that. So so there's all sorts of skills that people already have that that you'll bring to the table, right? And we'll we'll discover that as we start to go through the labs. And that's probably one of the most interesting parts is how people start to, you know, develop and like to do all sorts of different things. But now um I, I couldn't put a number on it, but I would say that anywhere from 25 to 50 percent of the management team on a construction project are um, females and people of color, right? Because it's because that's their interest, and it's a it's a wide open, very diverse field, and people can make money, particularly right now where um, we're starting to see the beginning of you know the the labor shortage i when when we think about things like that and coming out of the pandemic we could all look around and see how many tower cranes are in the year like but like construction and engineering are those kind of fields where there's always a need so um honestly it's i'm happy i've been able to work my entire career um, simply because I, I have to, right? So, um, and if you get to do something that you like, that's even better. It's fantastic. Any more questions? Um, for Talker, I put in the chat the early college links, and she said you are a junior, so next year you'll be a senior. Definitely, definitely you want to submit an application. You can do that now, but you can also do early college if you want to. So, and in early college, you can you can start this summer if you want to. So, you just have to go on our website and submit an application, and those classes are free to you if you are doing early college. And right. any, any questions, you can, um, you will see Shannon's information. You can contact her. She'll give you, she'll answer all the questions that you have, okay? Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. And Tanina, you are all set. Deshen, I, I private message you. So I hope you saw it. Um, about the, uh, the vaccination card and stuff? Yes, please. I, I, I sent my vaccination card to uh, May. I don't know if she sent it over to you guys, but I can I can send it to you if you just want to shoot me over your email. I don't think that was in the. Text. You said you sent it to Min. Yeah. Okay, I'll get it then. Thank you. Okay. So, so Tucker, can I ask you um, where do you live? Tucker Burgess. Uh, Walpole. Okay. Oh, you know what? That's kind of we've had we have had like. Two or three students from um, Walpole or Nor, I think so, in the last couple of years. But yeah, um, if you if you wanted to commute in like one day a week and take some classes, that's a that's a great idea. Because like um, Jenny is saying, if it's you know at no charge and you can swing it, um, then you're that much further ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then and then one thing about the early college is depends on that's why you have to talk with Shannon. Depend on the school, those classes they might be able you might be able to count them towards your high school graduation. So it's not like you're gonna be taking, let's say, five high school classes, and then you have to add another class from BFIT. No, you might have to do four classes at your school and one at BFIT. So can't definitely give it a try. See what Shannon says. And also that will help you decide if 
construction management is for you or not. Because the class that you'll be taking, exactly. is, they're, not, they're not lecture classes, they're hands-on classes. Oh, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Free of charge again. <laughs> Any, any other questions? Yeah, uh, so I, I recall uh, um, I, hearing about uh, we had to take like a refrigeration course. Uh, I went to, to BFIT for HVAC, so would I still have to take that class? Ah, that's a good question. Uh, you know, <clears throat> what a good mix of people. Um, <laughs> there are quite a few students that went to HVAC. VAC and then have transferred into so it's um so you will get some credits for that right we'll we'll look at it individually um, as to where that all fits in but that's that's interesting that you say that because I think there's been three students in the last couple of years that have have uh, started with HVAC and now are in construction management so all right that's thank you. that's a val that's a valuable skill. Because you know buildings are so sophisticated now. You know, oh all yeah. These, all these smart buildings are so, you know, high tech. Yeah, you can make a killing just in the controls part of it. Mm hmm All right. If there is no more question, Leslie, I don't know if you wanna um, give them your contact information if they want to reach out to you for any questions yep i'm gonna and stick it in the can, chat you can always reach out to the admissions office and i'm putting the email for you in the chat with any questions that you have and even if you don't know who to ask the question you email admissions we will forward it to the appropriate person 